Hi guys, welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we fill in the flight log on an operational flight plan. Now, we'll be using the Lido operational flight plan format from SimBrief, which is identical to the format we use at the airline I currently work for. The sector we're planning to fly is from Manchester to Alicante, and I've generated an operational flight plan in SimBrief based on a real flight plan at the same sector. Now, from what I understand, SimBrief uses the exact same software to generate operational flight plans used by Lido in real life. In fact, if we compare the two, you can see they are pretty much identical, with the difference in block fuel of just 42 kilos, which is about the same amount of fuel the 737 burns in one minute during the cruise. So, rest assured, when you generate an operational flight plan from SimBrief, you'll be getting pr pretty much the same flight plan we'd be using in real life. Now, I was going to create a tutorial covering every aspect of the operational flight plan, explaining all the information presented, but SimBrief, as you can see here, already have a very good interactive operational flight plan which does this for you. What today's tutorial is going to do is show you how we interpret this information and fill in the flight log just as we would do in real life. Okay, so now let's have a look at the flight log and explain all the information presented to you and then I'll explain after top of climb what you need to fill in to accurately track your en route timings and fuel burn. Now starting right at the top of the flight log you can hear, see the most critical Mora and Maximum Shear. Now coincidentally they're both over the same waypoint today which is Alpha Golf November which is Ajan in France. Now Mora stands for minimum off route altitude and this height here of 13,100 feet means that so long as we don't descend lower than that we'll be at least 2,000 feet above the highest obstacle or uh, terrain throughout the entire sector, so it's quite useful to have that figure in the event of an emergency descent. The maximum shear value is the value of turbulence over, uh, this case, uh, the waypoint Ajan, and that value today is 5. Well, it says that any time you get a 5, you could possibly anticipate severe turbulence and 3 moderate turbulence, but take this figure with a pinch of salt. Sometimes I've had shears in real life in excess of 14 or 15, it's been completely smooth. Other times I've had shears of 0, and it's had, we've had actually some moderate turbulence. But generally speaking, it does give you a rough idea where you can expect some lumps and bumps, which is worthwhile telling the cabin crew when you might perhaps put the seatbelt sign on and temporarily, temporarily stop their, the uh, in-flight service. Now next we're going to step from left to right explaining all the individual uh, points and information available in the flight log. So now let's step through the flight log looking at all the information available to us as flight crew. Now starting from the left you have information about each individual waypoint. You can see which airway we're on, the position of that waypoint and its name, the identification of that waypoint via ICAO and also any applicable frequency. So if we take Compton as an example, you'll see that we'll be on the Upper November 859 Airway Overhead Compton. The three letter ICAO code is Charlie Papa Tango and the frequency of the VOR is 114.35. Next we have the latitude and longitude, which is the geographical position of that waypoint. Now we have some information regarding timings. Now the top time is something called EET, which is the estimated en route time, which is in between each individual waypoint. And we have TTLT, which is total elapsed time from us taking off and pushing toga. Next we have information that we need to fill in during the flight, the top boxes for the estimated time overhead the waypoint and the ATO boxes for the actual time overhead the waypoint. Then we have information regarding our height and distance between each individual waypoint. Here at the top we have the flight level, we have the minimum off route altitude for that waypoint and the distance between each individual waypoint. The next bit of information is the initial magnetic track and the initial true track. The difference between the two is called drift. And then we have the remaining distance to our destination for each individual waypoint. Now we have information regarding speeds. You'll see the Mach number, true airspeed and ground speed for each individual waypoint. That's based on the cost index and the cruise altitude today and any headwind or tailwind components. Now we have information regarding wind components in shear. You can see the actual estimated wind over the waypoint, any headwind or tailwind component and also the shear value. Lido is incredibly accurate, it uses forecast weather information and it's quite common to see that the track and speeds are pretty much identical for each waypoint regarding the wind. 
Next we have information regarding the temperature, the height of the tropopause and the temperature deviation. Now the uh, temperature deviation is from something called standard isotemperature and that information is important for the FMC so it can provide a more optimal cruise speed and then we also have the height of the tropopause. Now, the area below the tropopause is the troposphere and that's usually where all the weather is so generally above the tropopause the weather can be better unless you've got a very severe build up or some sort of cell or storm which can occasionally get above the tropopause but that's why we have weather radar. Lastly then we have ins uh, information regarding the estimated fuel on board and the actual fuel on board as you can see as the flight progresses that figure goes down. Now on the right we have the planned total fuel burn which we can then compare to the actual fuel burn and you can see how that figure increases as the flight progresses. So that's it, that's all the information available on the flight log. So that's the flight log explained, what I'm going to do now is push back, get the engine started, taxi to runway 23 left and get us airborne. Now the only thing I want to point out is that just before you initiate the takeoff roll, make sure you start the elapsed timer so you have a reference for the flight log regarding timings. Right, I'll get us started and you can meet me as we just approach top of climb. So here we are at the cruise level, we've just reached 35,000 feet about 3 or 4 minutes ago and I've just finished uh, filling in the estimated en route type of the flight logs. So I've scanned a copy of the flight plan so you can see what's going on. Now if you remember rightly we were airborne or we pushed the elapsed timer at 11.22 just before we pushed Toga. So you can see at Manchester I've put 11.22. Now what I've done is sequentially add four minutes to the next waypoint which is 26 the next is eight minutes so it's 34 and then to Kidley which is six minutes which is 40 so you can see how you just have to add each timing for each individual waypoint and you keep doing that until you get to the last page of the flight log now if you look here on the flight log on the last page you can see here at Alicante I put the uh, actual time of arrival or estimated time of arrival at 1347 just by adding all those waypoints now you can do a gross error check if you look at the flight time today it's 2 hours 25 minutes if you just simply add that to the time at which you got airborne uh, 11.22 it should equal the time you've put on the arrival time which is 1.347 so we know that all checks and adds up. Now looking at our flight we're just approaching the Goodwood waypoint or the Goodwood VOR so let's have a look at uh, the time check here well you can see here it's just about to switch to 11.47 Zulu and the ETA and this is 11.46 so we can say on the operational flight plan we're overhead Goodwood at 11.47 so if we compare that to the actual time we expect to be here, 11.48, we're running about one minute ahead of schedule. Next, let's do a fuel check. We can see we have 7.2 tonnes on board. So if we write that on the operational flight plan, we should have 6.9 tonnes on board. So we have an extra 300 kilos. And now let's just compare the fuel burn. If we click it to used, you can see we've used 2,100 uh, 2, kilos sorry, of fuel. The operational fly plan says we should have burned 2.2. And that's very simply all we do. Every 30 minutes or so we make a, a check of the time, the fuel on board and the amount of fuel burnt to make sure the flight is progressing safely. Now another thing I just want to bring to your attention is how accurate the Lido spot winds are. As I said we've just about a minute ago over flew Goodwood VOR and you can see here the wind was two, forecast to be 292 at 57 knots. You can see here it's 315 at 43 knots so it's only about 10-15 knots away and a few degrees off the track so the flight plan format is incredibly accurate sometimes it can be even closer so.
So the only other thing I wanted to highlight in the flight log is FIR boundaries. So you can see we're approaching the waypoint CITET and you can see on the flight log it says France FIR UIR. So that means we're going to be transferred from London control to probably Paris control in this case or Brest uh, FIR. So you could anticipate in real life a frequency change but obviously in a desktop simulator on your own you don't have to worry about things like that. That's all you've got to do every 30 minutes, make your fuel logs and time checks and make sure you're on target. There really isn't that much more to it. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I hope to see you for another Flight Deck to Sim uh, tutorial or live stream in the very near future. Take care. Bye-bye.